in the intense world of medical emergencies. One patient, three times, stab wounds. There's nothing more extreme than a code red. So this is a two-car RTC. That's correct. It means there's an immediate threat to life. Got one male still trapped in the vehicle. In the West Midlands, a highly specialist team are on call 24-7, ready to race to these major traumas. Meet you in four minutes. By road and air. Zero three, we are lifted from Cosford. Responding to the most severe 999 calls. Open up the Lucas device over there for me. Day and night. All right, well done. From car crashes. Oh, just need to check. To stabbings. Are going to put some oxygen on your pals? Here, where time is critical, lives will be saved. Ah. On roadsides, in back gardens, and inside homes. It's okay, can we off the chest? These emergency doctors and paramedics use cutting edge trauma techniques and surgery normally only seen in operating theatres to save people from almost certain death. Oh, sorry, mate. Oh, no, mate. Oh, no. We're going to sort you out. Filmed over two months with the critical care team. Ready, set, slide. We captured every vital second as these specialist crews work to save lives. On roll. Ready, steady, roll. Tonight... This lad's just ran out across the road. A boy is run over on his way to school. Can you move your right arm? A woman suffers a horrific open ankle fracture. Nice deep breath, well Sandra. That's it, well done. Nice deep breath. A horse-riding disaster. On the left, you know, on the left part of my neck. Yeah and a man has a cardiac arrest in front of his daughter. So what I'm going to try and do, I'm going to give him some sedation and potentially paralysis as well, just so that we can look after all of his breathing. Hello, are you all right, AD? Critical care paramedic Pete Edwards joined the ambulance service 15 years ago. Just so I give the car a bit of a clean. Looks nice when it's clean, so. Five years ago, he underwent specialised training and is now a member of the critical care team. Nearly done, sorry. The critical care team rely on their fleet of high performance vehicles to get them and their specialised equipment to an emergency in the quickest time possible to provide vital life saving backup to the ambulance service. This bag, the red bag, or bag one, as we, we sometimes call it, is, is air enhanced care bag. So it's got some um, equipment in here that they, they don't carry on the ambulances, and that includes sort of surgical equipment. We've got some advanced airway equipment, extra little bits that the, the ambulance crews don't tend to have. Ambulance services with ocean breathing. This, this lad's just ran out across the road and I've hit him with the car. Okay. Where's the pain that he's feeling? Where's, where's the pain? In his leg. Are you in the road still? <laughs> yeah, we're in the road. You're OK, left. 13 year old Patrick, hit by a car, the patient is still in the road. So, yeah. We haven't got a huge amount, we've got an age. The rest we'll have to uh, figure out once we get to scene. An ambulance has been dispatched, but with a child's life in danger, Pete and fellow critical care paramedic Mike Andrews are also urgently needed. We'll be there first, won't we? Probably. Yeah, we're going to be the first resource on scene, which is a bit unknown at the minute. In a 12-hour shift, Pete and Mike will attend up to eight emergencies. Their skills and training can make the difference to someone surviving or not, but only if they get to them in time. That's completely blocked that way, Mike. Well, it looks a bit. Some of this might just be general traffic, I don't know, or it could be because of what's happened. In these freezing conditions, Pete and Mike will need to act fast to stop the child's injuries becoming critical. Can't take the wrong way around it over there, which is not one I'm going to park us just in front. Right? Okay. I'll press us in attendance. Mike, shall I get out and jump and have a quick look? Eight minutes after receiving the call, Pete and Mike are on scene. Morning, how are you oh, doing? All right. Yeah, Hello, Patrick. 
Hiya, mate. I'm Peach. I'm one of the paramedics who wish me. Are you mum? Yes. Hello, Hello mum. Listen. 13-year-old Patrick was walking to school when he stepped off the pavement into the path of an oncoming car. We're going to have a look at him. We're going to look after him for you. All right, we've just got here ourselves. He's talking to us. That's a good stop. Are you hurt? Uh, just my ear. Just your ear? OK, let's just have a quick look. It's common in car versus pedestrian road traffic collisions for the pedestrian to have sustained multiple injuries. Using their enhanced trauma training, Pete will need to assess him quickly to prioritise treatment. Can you move this arm just gently? Yeah, you can move it. Can you move your right arm? My shoulder. Your shoulder hurts. And what about your legs? Can you move it a little bit? Don't, don't move it too much, as long as you can move. OK, all right. Patrick is able to move his arms and legs so Pete can rule out a serious spinal injury. OK, all right. But the blood coming out of his right ear is a major concern. It's a hemorrhage just out of his ear. Yeah, I'll give him an yeah, update, so, mate. Right. So a potential for a base gun until we investigate it further. Pete and Mike suspect Patrick may have fractured his skull, resulting in a build-up of blood in the brain. If so, he's at grave risk of a stroke or potentially fatal hemorrhage. Happy to pass an ethane. Yeah, mate. Crew on uh, red backup. Just to see if we'll get him out of the cold, all right. The Midlands Air Ambulance Service covers a region of six counties and 6,000 square miles, the largest operating area in the whole of the UK. Each helicopter is crewed by a pilot, an emergency doctor and a critical care paramedic. Ambulance service, is the patient breathing? Uh, yeah, but she's, she's struggling to breathe. She can't breathe in. She had a fall from a horse. Oh, OK, she's conscious, though. Yeah, well, we don't know if she was conscious when she fell. She was in shock. She walked round. That girl, she can't move. Is she bleeding at all? Not that we can see. Series 3 lifted with an ETA of four minutes. A local ambulance crew, who are already on scene, have called for backup. This is a female who is riding a horse at a trot. She's been thrown from the horse and impacted into a concrete step. She presented quite significant pain. She's slightly hypotensive with a very weak radial pulse, looks very pale. Um, crew are struggling to get a handle on any sort of analgesia, I think, due to her, her query slight compromise on her pulse, etc. Um, and have requested some support. The rider's condition is deteriorating. So the air ambulance has been scrambled with emergency doctor Matt Rowley and critical care paramedic Karen Baker on board. It does make you concerned when you hear that someone's blood pressure is low, that they've got a very weak pulse, that they're very pale. It does make you concerned that she's potentially bleeding somewhere. So hopefully we'll get a better handle on that when we get on scene and get to have a look at it. They need to find somewhere to land quickly. Just coming into the overhead now. A fall from a horse, even at low speed, can cause catastrophic injuries. There are horses absolutely everywhere, but there's a, a field this side. Okay. Just giving it a wide berth because our dog walkers making their way across the field, so hopefully they'll be uh, the other side of the field by the time we uh, make the approach. The rider could have broken her back or be suffering from a potentially fatal internal bleed. Two, three on the ground. Finally on the ground, Matt and Karen arrive on scene. Rachel. Yeah. Hello, I'm Matt, this is Karen. Where's the worst of your pain at the moment? Yeah. Inside your chest. 49 year old Rachel, an experienced rider, was turning off the road into a field when a sudden hailstorm caused her horse to spook and she was thrown onto a concrete path. Can I just have a little feel on the front of your chest? Is that okay? Just tell me if it's painful when I'm pushing anywhere. Her daughter Kelly was with her and called 999. Yeah. I'm here, I'm here. Rachel, I know we're asking you lots of questions yeah, at the moment, sweetheart. Yeah. So, yeah. when you got up and walked on your yeah. horse, yeah. did you have any pins and needles yeah. in your arms or legs? I, uh, I can't remember. I can't remember. Okay. Dazed and in agony, Rachel can't remember the fall. As well as low blood pressure and confusion, she's also showing an increased heart rate. Uh. All signs of potential internal bleeding. Nothing around there? No, it's all in your back. OK, sweetheart. The pins and needles sensation could be temporary, 
but it could be a sign of a serious injury to her spinal cord. Rachel needs urgent hospital treatment. Let's give you that blood pressure again. But Dr. Matt knows that moving her risks leaving her paralysed. Is that your chest again, Rachel? Yeah. yeah. Off the bridge, you see. That's all we see, thank you. The critical care team is available 24-7 to attend to the most serious emergencies from road traffic accidents to cardiac arrests throughout the West Midlands. The role's rewarding, uh, I think, uh, it's because it is challenging. It's without doubt a huge privilege to do this job and to ha have this skill set and the capability to, to help these patients at the worst time of their lives. Part of their training is in drugs and anaesthesia, normally only used in operating theatres and intensive care. I'm just going to pop a little needle into your arm so we can give you some pain relief, OK? So in the most critical cases, they can take over the basic functions of the body to keep their patients alive until they get to hospital. We can obviously put people into medically induced comas and stuff to help manage them. If we have a cardiac arrest and then uh, managed to get a pulse back on a patient. We carry some extra bits and pieces and drugs that we can add to what the crews do to give the patients a better chance of um, survival to hospital. Critical care paramedic Jack Lewis is about to start a 12-hour shift. It's a drug check day, so all of the in-house care drugs are bags, because if we all turn up at the same job, we all know what's in all the bags, where it all is. It just makes life a little bit easier. Ambulance service, is the patient breathing? Um, yes. Is the patient conscious? Yes. Man, what's the problem? Um, he's really struggling to breathe. He's just literally come on really fast. He's absolutely blue okay. here. Okay, okay. All right, okay. Is he still breathing? <sighs> Only just. He's done all this on me now. Is he taking regular breaths at the moment? No. Rocking at the mouth. Is he having a seizure? I think he's having a seizure. Okay. Let him go with it. Come on, Dad. Okay, look on me now, darling. Okay, I've got no breathing. Okay, roll him onto his back for me. I'm going to tell you how to give life support. They are pulling up outside, but you need to start this, okay? One hand flat in the centre of his chest, put your other hand on top, lock your fingers together. Keep your arms straight, push yeah. down, hard and fast, two times a second. Yeah. I want you to do that until the crew are right with you, okay? I know. You're doing a really good job. You're doing really, really well. Okay, the here. An out-of-hospital cardiac arrest is always a code red emergency. Without swift action, the man, 79-year-old David, could die in minutes. The local ambulance crew has called for immediate critical care backup. This is a crew request uh, for assistance uh, for an elderly man. I think the call initially came through his fitting, but is, I believe, now cardiac arrest. And I think they're struggling with some uh, airway management options, which is one of the skills and health skills that we carry. Thanks to his daughter's prompt action and the crew's response, David's heart is beating again, but without enough oxygen, his life is hanging by a thread. Jack carries drugs and resuscitation equipment that could save his life, but he's still five minutes away from the address and may not get there in time. Downtime has been, I think, fairly considerable. I think call time was 20 past two, and we're now approaching 2.40, so we've had 20 minutes of potentially cardiac arrest, so it might be that by the time I get there, actually we're past the point of making a meaningful difference for this gentleman and we go no further. Uh, 62. Hello, mate, how are you doing? Jack arrives at the address and is immediately briefed by the paramedic team so he can lead the treatment. We have 74-year-old David. Hello, David. 79-year-old. Yeah. Um, collapsed, daughter says his breathing went funny. Yeah. Uh, she started CPR. Initially uh, querying if there was a carotid when we got here, yeah. there was a gonal breathing. Yeah. Uh, he arrested at 14, 19. OK. And we got a ROSC at 14, 35. Nice one. Daughter Caroline, who was with him when he collapsed, has been joined by other concerned family members. Awesome um, job. The paramedics have inserted a tube into David's throat and he is now breathing with the help of a ventilator. I'm just going to get some midazolam and then at that point we'll put him onto my ventilator because it's, it's just a bit better for him, if that's OK. Yeah. 
Jack needs to get David to hospital for urgent test to find out the cause of his cardiac arrest. All right, Dad. Nearly done. But for now, he's focused on just keeping him alive. David, you're doing really, really well. When we get him on the ambulance, we'll just have a few minutes, we'll get him sorted. Back in Smethwick, critical care paramedics Mike Andrews and Pete Edwards are at the scene of a road traffic accident where a 13-year-old boy has a serious head injury after being run over on the way to school. Just looking at the car for some indicators of how hard the car has hit him and potentially for injury patterns, really. So where the, he's obviously gone onto the bonnet, but the windscreen is intact. So he's got a, he a head injury and some bleeding from his ear, so we, we need to look at that quite quickly. It's likely Patrick's head would have taken the main impact of the blow, potentially fracturing his skull. Patrick, do you, do you think you were knocked unconscious at all? No. All right, just, just, have a look, just a second. Checking his pupil's reaction to light will show whether he has suffered a concussion. Have you got any pins and needles anywhere? No. OK. All right. How bad is the pain at the moment? What is it? Your ear, is that the worst pain? And what about your shoulder? Is it just when you move it? OK, all right, no problem. The ambulance is here now. What we're going to do, we're going to get a proper look at you in there, all right. Pedestrian, 13-year-old male, uh, struck by a car. As West Midlands ambulance crew arrive on scene, Mike updates the critical care trauma desk on Patrick's condition. Query basal skull fracture. Well, the patient is conscious and talking to us. He's just got a bit of a hemorrhage coming from his right ear. Now the ambulance is here, they need to get Patrick to hospital as quickly as possible. He's got a head injury. I think we need to get off him. We'll get him immobilised. So if you could grab your stretcher and scoop. We haven't stripped him off because he's going to get freezing cold. Yeah, yeah. So are you all right with that? Is that OK? All right. Let's do a few little checks on you, OK? See how you're doing. Peter and Mike need to be sure they don't aggravate any undetected injuries when they move him. I, th I think without the collar, oh, I'm, I'm right. yeah, but what we'll do, we'll get us, he's moving it, just keep your head nice and still, Patrick, that's it. He's moving his head freely and he's moving all his limbs free, he's got no paralysis. Okay. Um, he's, we'll have to get this bag off, I think, so it might be just a okay. case, we'll have a look at that in a second. Has anybody got any shears on them? Keeping Patrick as still as possible, Pete oversees the ambulance crew as they position the scoop stretcher underneath him. Any pain in your tummy? Mm. Nothing? No in your back? Lower back? That's good stuff. OK. Right. Just let us do all the work, Patrick. OK. We're going to just do... There's going to be a little bit of movement, mate. You're going to feel a pinch of me, you're right. All right. Now, it might pinch your bum. Tell us if it does and we'll stop. You've got his head just clear of that, mate. Yeah, Once the two halves are snapped together, Patrick's head and neck must be immobilised. Yep. OK, right. Before it is safe to move him onto the stretcher. Got some graze into the temporal region there. The other thing I just, we need to have a look at is his sort of upper thigh pelvis region, because where, where the dent is on the bonnet, it, it looks like that's down. where it's uh, struck him. Yeah, if that makes sense. So, ready, steady, lift. And ready, steady, down. OK. So, that's, you're right. All right, nothing to worry about. We're going to look after you, OK? OK, go and feet first, then... What we're going to do, we're going to take some of these clothes off, all right? Yeah. On the ambulance, Pete can oversee a full-body examination. He's worried Patrick may have broken a bone in his pelvis, which could rupture the femoral artery, causing him to bleed out and die. Take a nice big deep breath in for me. Big deep breaths in. It's clear. It's equal. OK. So he's, I've checked his pupils, they were leaking and active right. He's got some, an abrasion to the top of his sort of the right side of his forehead and he's got this blood coming out of his ear that I can't see where it's coming from. So in terms of hospitals from here, he's nice and stable, but just because there's blood out the, out the ear, I, I, I think sway towards the children's, what do you think? Patrick is alert and doesn't seem to have broken any bones. Pete is happy he is stable enough to leave him in the care of the ambulance crew to take him to Birmingham Children's Hospital to be further assessed by the emergency doctors. It's the weekend, but there's no let-up in life-threatening emergencies and no rest for the critical care team. 2, 20, 20. 
critical care paramedic Tom Waters is prepping for his shift. Saturdays, obviously, more people are off. More people want to do certain things. People are more active. Um, so, yeah, I think that could mean a busier day for us. The weather, it's, um, it's not too bad outside, so we'll see how the day goes. But we're booked on. We're good to go. We've got our drugs out. And it's a bit of a waiting game now. Ambulance service is a patient breathing. Hi, I'm not sure. Literally just seen a crash outside of our house. The car's literally like written up. Okay, so it's one car. Yes, it's one car who's gone into that like, the wall. Did you see how fast the car is travelling at all? It was going quite fast again. Like more than 50. That's absolutely fine. I am going to be on seed in 30 seconds. Thank you. With a car crash in a residential area, there's the danger of multiple casualties. Police, fire brigade and ambulance have been called and specialist trauma backup is also requested. RTC, don't really know what's going on, but it's here. At the scene, a crowd has gathered on the pavement. Oh shit. The vehicle, a rental car, has somersaulted into a brick wall and the driver is nowhere to be seen. Which way did this car come from? Do you know? Probably. OK, right. And did you all see it? OK. Does that catch you anywhere when you breathe in? In Wolverhampton, Dr Matt Rowley and critical care paramedic Karen Baker have flown nine miles in the Midlands Air Ambulance to rescue 49-year-old Rachel, who is in a critical state after she was thrown from her horse onto a concrete path. Any pain in your tummy? No. Good, OK. What were sats on there? 100%. OK. It was just the fact that Catherine was a bit slow in. OK. Any pain there in your tummy? Yeah. Yeah. No, OK. Rachel's low blood pressure and poor circulation, along with her memory loss and severe pain in her upper back and ribs, is a sign that she may be suffering from life-threatening internal bleeding. Do you want to take this, the mask off right now and just see how she's saturating without the mask? What you want to do is just have a little feel underneath your neck at the moment, OK? On the left, you know, on the left part of my neck. Yeah. If where the ball is, mm. I'll be there as well. Have you? Okay. Yeah. Got when I'm pushing that on your neck, tell and me if you've got... a tiny, tiny... No, gone there. OK. There. There, is that on tender the in the middle of your neck? Is it the bone of my finger is there? OK. Rachel needs urgent hospital treatment, but before Matt allows her to be moved, he needs to be sure she hasn't fractured any vertebrae, which could result in paralysis. How much morphine she had off your time? Five. Just five. Yeah. Should we go for the... Yeah, let's go for another five, and then we can give her another ten, then, can't we? She had any antimetics yet either? Yes. She's, She's had the on dance trial. Yes. Examination's yes. fine. Um, oh, yeah. Let's give her a bit more, a uh, bit more opiates, and see how we get on. Dr. Matt judges the precise dose of analgesia Rachel needs to help her tolerate the journey to hospital without risking a drop in blood pressure that could cause her to black out again. She'd be good for New Cross. Yeah. I agree with you. I think New Cross, think, yeah, might have something in the right chest. I think we're so close. I don't think she probably warrants giving anything stronger like ketamine or anything. It's a nine-minute journey to New Cross Hospital. Rachel will travel in the ambulance with her head and neck immobilised in a collar to protect it from any further damage. All right, Jude, if your pain was a 10 at the start, where are we now, do you think? About a three? OK. Yeah. Let's give her another two and a half or something. She's quite comfy, isn't she, now? So initially assessed her on scene. They've been slightly concerned because she's quite pale. Her initial blood pressure is a bit low, and she's got significant pain on the right side of her chest when they're breathing in and out. So um, quite rightly, they've been fairly cautious with the analgesia that they're given to start with. Her observations have improved, and that's enabled us to give more morphine. Right, I am going to go and start loading the... Uh... The motor back up. OK. With Rachel's condition now stable and her pain under control, Matt and Karen leave the ambulance crew to transfer her to hospital. 
She's now fairly settled. She's able to take big, deep breaths in and out, and the pain has, has subsided slightly. So they're going to take her to the nearest hospital from here. Player. In Dudley, critical care paramedic Tom Waters is at the scene of a road traffic accident. Hi, buddy, you're right. Yeah, I'm okay, mate. It's just a few puts and bruises. The car somersaulted off the road into a lamppost. Miraculously, the driver, 39 year old Carl, walked free from the wreckage and is being treated inside the ambulance. The car is absolutely total, yeah, isn't it? Like, it is, yeah. like yeah. It's, it's, it's been through a massive roll, isn't it? Yeah. And then the men flipped that like as well, yeah. All... And it was just you in the car, just wasn't me it? In the car. And if you hit, I'm just, I'll go check, nobody else has yeah. been hit, all right, and then. According to Carl, the accident happened when he was run off the road by another driver. Are you happy for me to? He, yes. he looks absolutely fine, doesn't yeah, he? I don't, I don't like the fact, yeah. So the fact he's self-educated, yeah. he's walked, he's chatting, he's yeah. GCS 15, he remembers it all. Yeah. If anything, he can go to local. Oh, there you go. Hey, bud. Are you getting your phone? Yeah. All right. Extraordinarily, Carl seems most anxious about his mobile phone. So basically, the one gentleman is the. Um, he's just getting his bits and pieces out of the car. Well, has he done this? Long story short rammed off the road, um, hell of a mechanism. He just wanted to check his stuff, so... Um... All right, bud. Do you want me to have a look for you? Do you want... Yeah, go and have... We'll get... Yeah, yeah. Go and have a sit down in the... Um... Take those bits for you. My phone is in there. It's a... OK. On a 20 I like. OK, well, well, we'll make sure we... Yeah. Get... I just need to get it because my mum was on... OK. ...try to ring the let, let, the, let the guys just yeah. save it. We'll get it for you. Go and sit in the ambulance. Cheers. Can I get the phone, though, the phone? Yeah, yeah, we'll ask one of those guys. We'll get you the phone. I promise you. But can we get you inside yeah, first? What's the... What's your... Bloody lucky, isn't he? Yeah. He's really desperate for his phone. Satisfied that Carl has not been seriously injured, Tom is happy to leave him in the care of the local ambulance crew. In Birmingham, critical care paramedic Jack is treating 79-year-old David, who is fighting for his life after a 15-minute cardiac arrest. Daughter Caroline and other worried family members are also on scene. So he's had a cardiac arrest. He's had a cardiac arrest that's been prolonged for quite a period of time. Because of that, his brain's been starved of oxygen, even with good CPR. So it's likely that if he starts to try and come around too much, he's going to be very agitated and quite difficult to, to look after. As a highly trained paramedic, Jack is authorised to use specialised drugs normally only used by doctors in intensive care in hospital. So what I'm going to try and do, I'm going to give him some sedation and potentially paralysis as well, just so that we can look after all of his breathing, all of his awareness. With David barely conscious, Jack must decide whether to put him into an induced coma to protect the vital supply of oxygen to his brain and organs. OK, so he's had three milligrams of midazolam. He's had that now at 14.48. If he has another cardiac arrest while he is under full sedation, it will be much more difficult to resuscitate him, and he may die. Yeah, so eyes are open, but not, he's not really responding to you. He's localising, so that's a five. Yeah. Ben, can I have a conference call, please, with senior cover for to discuss some rock? Rocaronium bromide is a fast-acting muscle relaxant normally used in operating theatres before major surgery. Hi, Neil, you OK? Good. Thanks, mate. Um, so I've got a 79-year-old uh, gentleman who's had a witness cardiac arrest at home. Jack wants to consult with the senior doctor on call before he decides whether to go ahead and use it. I'm giving him a small amount of midaz, so three milligrams, just to try and flat him out a little bit. So the call is to discuss plenty to add rock over the top of that to facilitate um, kind of a safe extrication and get him off to hospital. Let's try the SIMV first, no problem. Yep, sounds good to me. Thank you very so much, Neil. Have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye. For now, Jack will keep David on the ventilator at his current level of sedation. Have you got a full cylinder there, guys, or a nearly full cylinder? We've got a, we've got a spare one on the other side. Perfect. So if we pop that on the where yours is, yeah. So what this will do is it will support the breaths he makes, uh, and it'll add a couple in over the top. I'm happy if we want to just break the scoop and we'll start sliding it underneath him and get him packaged, but we'll obviously just keep it nice and steady, keep a close eye on him. Looks like he's fighting a little bit, isn't he? 
It's common for someone who has suffered a cardiac arrest and been resuscitated to re-arrest again on the way to hospital. We'll get him strapped and packaged, we'll do one last check, and if we're happy, we'll extricate him out to the stretcher, get him onto the ambulance, reassess him there. The way he's going, I probably will end up giving him some rock on the back of the vehicle and just making sure we're settled for the transfer, but if you're happy now, we'll get him out. Yeah. I'll grab the vent and the monitor. <laughs> one, two, three. Okay, just watch out for all of this. Is nice slow time. If you keep coming forward, we'll get out behind you. Nice and high there. So just grab my, make sure I've got the little yellow handbaggy thing with the drugs in it, which should be on the chair, and the red bag. Is that all right? Thank you. Am I all right? Nice and slow. On board the ambulance, Jack makes his final checks. That's right, so we've got airway. We've got IGL size four on a circuit that's working. He seems to be tolerating it fairly well. I'm not convinced that we're getting... He's not making very effective rasps. He is breathing for himself, but they're not particularly strong. On that basis, um, I would feel more comfortable taking over uh, yeah. and I'll giving him the rock. Uh, 7.8, I think it was. Having weighed up the risks, Jack decides the safest course is to take over David's breathing entirely. So once I give him this, obviously he won't make any movement, he won't breathe for himself, but it's really important that we keep an eye out for things like tearing, tachycardias, and a raise in his blood pressure, because yeah. those are things that are going to indicate maybe some awareness. OK, so I'm going to give him the rock now. Once the neuromuscular agent has taken effect, David is now effectively in intensive care conditions. His body unable even to breathe by itself. 60, thank you. We're about to leave for Heartlands. Um, are you ready for an atmist? He has now had, in total, eight milligrams of midazolam, and I've given him the 50 of rock, because he was struggling to, to fully synchronise with the ventilator in the end. Before they set off to hospital, Jack updates the trauma desk on David's condition. We will be eight minutes to Heartlands received. Yes, right, eight minutes to Heartlands. That is affirmative. Leaving one of the ambulance crew members to drive his vehicle, Jack will not leave David's side until they arrive at hospital. All right, David. Well just, done, David. We're off to the hospital, sir. So we've just become a little bit hypertensive again. So we just want to make sure that that's not any awareness. He's not becoming tacky. En route, Jack and the ambulance paramedics keep David under close observation. The slightest fluctuation in his blood pressure could be a sign that his heart is about to stop beating. You've got some global ischemia, yeah. but that's normal. That's for free perfusion, so I'm happy with that. Arriving at hospital, Jack can deliver his critically ill patient to the waiting cardiac team in intensive care. The skills that we provided there were the sedation, the advanced ventilation, the paralysis, the management of that post-ross patient who was you know, potentially very unstable, although he did quite well, and make sure that he was handed over effectively ready for ITU. So we had an airway in place. He wasn't aware of what's going on. He wasn't distressed. He wasn't in pain. Um, and we were able to effectively put him onto an advanced ventilator and ensure that his um, physiological needs are taken care of. The plan now, hopefully, will be to head back to base, restock, uh, maybe have a cup of tea, uh, but we've still got a couple of hours left in the shift, so I could end up going to anything in that period of time. Um, we're just hoping for a, a slight sleep, more sedate last few hours, um, but we'll see what comes through. The critical care team in the West Midlands are on the road 24-7, 365 days a year. No problem at all. At night, the car is crewed by a hospital doctor and a critical care paramedic. Do you know any raps? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, my name is Tom and I'm very I'll come up bully. With one, yeah. <laughs> I'm a bit of a bully, yeah. Oh, perhaps, perhaps not that one. <laughs> Dr. Tom Woolley is a hospital doctor who works 16 shifts a month for the critical care team. Ryan James is a full-time critical care paramedic, working an average four shifts a week, day and night. I think I'd struggle to work within a hospital environment. Certainly in the winter months, you go into work, it's dark. Yeah. You spend all day under artificial light. <laughs> and you don't get to go to these fine dining establishments. No, you don't get to go <laughs> to the chicken outlets. <laughs> I'm 
ambulance service. Is the patient breathing? Yes, it's me. I'm on for my foot's hanging off. Blood everywhere. My foot's just... It's just a detached. I can feel the bone sticking through. All right, we're not far now, mm. OK? A couple of minutes. Oh. In Warsaw, Dr. Tom Woolley and paramedic Ryan James are en route to a code red emergency. We're going to a 71-year-old lady with what sounds like an open ankle fracture, so there's a um, break to the skin. There's a paramedic crew on the scene, um, and they've asked us to come and assist with them. Open or compound fractures can have serious complications and need urgent treatment. Wounds are easily infected and disrupted blood flow can cause long-term damage to limbs. Just ahead. Tom and Ryan are only two miles away. If it's a really nasty, deformed ankle fracture and she hasn't got any pulses in her foot, that might be another reason uh, why they might want to call us to try and realign the fracture. Six minutes later, Tom and Ryan are on scene. Close. Hello. 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 What's your name? Sandra. Sandra. Hi, Sandra. Can I have a little lick of your foot, OK? Seventy-one-year-old Sandra has broken the two biggest bones in her ankle. That's a decent fracture, that is, isn't it? The snap shards of her tibia and fibula have speared straight through her flesh. I never get the 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 yeah. She had a for She Sandra was in such agony after her fall, it took her two hours to drag herself across the floor to reach the phone for help. Sandra, yes. can, you, can you feel me touching your foot there? Yeah. You can. It's a horrific injury, but Tom is concerned there may also be unseen damage to her nerves and that could result in her losing the foot. How's she coping with the Entonox? Sandra's been given gas and air for immediate pain relief. Just hold on to that, okay. pop it on your face, and just take slow, steady, deep breaths, OK? Make a full seal. But what Ryan and Tom need to do next calls for something much stronger. And you've got IV access, have you? Just managed yeah, to get and that's it working it. all right, is it? It's about a third of ten. <laughs> Give some of the good stuff as well. Yeah. Before they can move her off the floor, Sandra's shattered ankle must be realigned. So Ryan gives her liquid morphine to help dull the agonising pain as Tom pulls the bones back into place. Sorry, Sandra. Nice deep breaths for me. Nice deep breaths, well Sandra. Done. That's it. Well done. Nice deep breaths. Nice deep breaths. Keep going. Well done. You're doing a great job. Deep breaths, Sandra. Don't hold your breath, sweetheart. That's it. Nice, steady, in and out. Big deep breaths. Well done. Do you want to split yeah, it yeah, off Yeah, yeah, let's do that first, yeah. The worst part may be over, but they still have to lift the injured ankle up off the floor into a temporary splint. Well done, Sandra. You're doing really well. While maintaining the bones in their correct alignment. Yeah, happy. Yeah. OK, well done, Sandra. Well done, darling. Sandra. Just keep taking that gas as well. Keep taking that gas. Nice long deep breath, Sandra. Well done. Tom and Ryan now need to work with the ambulance crew to get Sandra to hospital as quickly as possible to prevent any further damage to her foot. We'll get the stretcher in, scoop her off the floor and get her on, shall we? Yeah, yeah. Just take some breaths of normal air in between. Is it still really sore? Just a bit. Just a bit. OK, all right. So you just lay where you are. We're going to get you onto a stretcher. We need to get you to hospital, because you've, broke, you've broken your ankle and it, it, it 
Doesn't look particularly and now great. The bones. It's an open fracture. That's right. It's an open fracture. Infect, does it right? So we need to get some um, antibiotics into you, and we need to fix it for you. Okay. Bothered. She's got quite a nasty-looking open ankle fracture. What that means is the bone protruding. And so, because it's quite a lot of damage to the, the skin around, um, we're going to take it to the QE uh, in Birmingham, which is a major trauma centre, rather than uh, the local hospital, just because she might need um, orthopaedics and plastic surgery, potentially. While Sandra gathers her strength for the next part of her ordeal... Are we going to get around this corner? Uh, I think we're going to struggle, to be honest with you. Yeah. Ryan and Tom need to work out how they're going to stretcher her out of the house. It's getting through here, isn't yeah. it? Or back in there, because we can't even go in there. So straight in here. What if we go blue Still carry sheet and then we can to. get around the corner? The only option is to bring Sandra out on a flexible plastic sheet. But the extra movement that will involve means Sandra must prepare herself for more pain. Sandra, listen to me, sweetheart. You're going to slide you into your hallway, and then we're going to open the door, and then we're going to have to manoeuvre you a little bit out of the front door, OK? Look, it's fine. Yeah. Come towards me. Now, Pecky. Hang on, sit up, guys. Hang on, that's it. There we go. All right. Is that OK? Do you think you'd be able to put your hands on the floor and then shuffle your bottom to the right-hand side? Do you think you'd be able to do that? Well done. Take your time. Is that OK? There That's we go. it, well done. Lie yourself back down now. OK. Oh. We're just going to put some more pain relief in your hand, all right? Sandra's played her part brilliantly. Now it's up to the ambulance team to complete the extraction as quickly and painlessly as possible. All right. You OK? Yeah. Yes. Any new pains or anything like that? No. OK. OK. Happy, Tom? Yeah, yeah. on three, one, two, three. You're just going to try now, all right, bear with yeah, us. Everyone sure. happy? Yeah. On slide. Ready, set, slide. OK, well done, Sandra. OK, we're, we're clear. You OK? Keep your head up, sweetheart. Ah, it well done. OK, yeah. right, should we lower down there, everyone? Yeah. And we'll just pop her on the stretcher. On lift, everyone. Ready, set, lift. OK, walk forward. Oh. Keep well coming, done, Sandra. keep coming, keep coming. And lower there. Well oh, done, Sandra. It took 10 milligrams of morphine, some gas and air, and a lot of courage on her part, but Sandra is now safely on the ambulance. Nice to meet you, Sandra. Yeah. I'm getting off now. Well. This gentleman's going to look after you. Uh, yeah, nice to meet you, chap. So okay, shall I? Knowing their patient is in a stable condition, Tom and Ryan are happy to leave her in the care of the crew for the 40 mile journey to hospital. The ambulance crew will take Sandra to the QE. They'll hand her over to the emergency department there, and the emergency doctors will then speak to the orthopaedic team about uh, admitting her to hospital for further treatment and probably need surgery on that ankle.